All right, so in the previous lesson, we talked about the setup and teardown instance methods, which run once before and once after each test in our test suite, in our test class. In this lesson, we'll introduce two class methods called setup class and teardown class. And they are going to run once before and after the complete test suite. So these are only going to run once at most. They're not going to run based on the number of tests, but they are going to run before everything starts up and after everything is done running. So in comparison to setup and teardown, these class methods are meant to be used for really expensive operations that are too costly to run before and after each test. One example is connecting to a database as part of a setup process and then disconnecting from that database as part of a teardown. That's really an expensive operation to do uh, before and after each test when you really only may need to connect to a database once in order to run a test to check that you're doing something correct in it. So for something like that that you only want to do once at the very beginning of the test suite, you'll use the setup class method. And then for the teardown for that to kind of tie up your loose ends and finish up something that is expensive, you're going to put that into teardown class class method. So let's take a look. Let's keep things super simple here. So I'll define a class called test operations and let's make it inherit from test case. In here, I'm going to define two simple tests that are going to have a single assertion each. So my first one is just going to be called test stuff and it's going to assert that the number one is equal to the number one. Below here, I can define another instance method called test more stuff. Again, feeding in self, this is an instance method. And here I can invoke assert equal. And let's say we're just going to confirm that an empty list is equal to an empty list. These tests are pointless, but the goal is that we have more than one so we can observe how these helpers are going to revolve around these. Now let's quickly review what we talked about in the previous lesson. If I declare a setup instance method, this will run before each of these tests. So we have two tests, so setup will run twice. Here I can just put a print function like this will run before each test. And we should see that output twice. We also talked in the previous lesson about teardown. That is also an instance method. And this will run once after each test. Again, because we have two total tests, teardown will be invoked twice. Here we can print this will run after each test. Okay, so now let's add the two new class methods that we talked about a minute ago. These are class methods, which means we have to use the class method decorator above them. Remember, that's how we declare something to be a class method. So here, I'm going to de define it right here, class method at class method above a method definition. And this one is called set up class. Again, just like set up and tear down, it has to be named this. So setup class, and remember the first argument that we give to a class method is not the instance, it's the class itself. So self can be very confusing here. So the typical community convention is CLS. CLS is just short for class. We're getting the class as an uh, argument here. Now here what I want to do is simply print, this will run once before the test suite starts. No matter how many tests we have down here, whether it be one or two as we have here, or 10 or 20, this is going to only run once. However, it's going to run once before everything else. It's gonna run before the test suite kicks off. The inverse or the complementary method to this, which I'm gonna put here, is another class method that's called teardown class. And just like with setup and teardown, these methods have to be named this way because we are overriding them. So you can't just name them whatever we want. And they have to be class methods, right? So the name has to match and you have to have that class method decorator above them. Again, we're not receiving the instance as an argument here. We're, we're receiving the class if you ever want to do something with it. But here it's going to be CLS. We're not going to be using the argument in this case. We're just going to print this will run once before, not before, but after the test suite finishes. Okay, and now let's go ahead and save this and see what happens when we execute. All right, so first up, as mentioned, setup class is going to run once before anything else. So that's why we're seeing this will run once before the test suite starts. That's coming from line number six. At that point, we go into the regular test process and we do have setup and teardown methods, which means they're gonna run once before each. So we're gonna run setup, then we're gonna run a test, then we're gonna run teardown, then we're gonna run setup again, then we're going to run the other test. Then we're going to run teardown again. And that process will continue for as many tests as we have. Then once all the tests are complete, then our teardown class class method will run. And so here we see this will run once after the test suite finishes. And that output uh, 
continues here at the very end. And that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We talked about the setup class and the teardown class class methods. This is typically used whenever you have an expensive operation that is not worth doing before and after each test. It's going to slow down the speed at which the test suite runs. So for example, if you want to connect to a database, you typically do it in a setup class once right here and then disconnect from it in a teardown class at the very conclusion of the test suite. Okay. Now remember, these are class methods, so they need the class method decorator above them. And they also accept the class as the very first argument. So putting self can be a little bit confusing. Don't do that. Stick with the community convention of CLS. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.